This is not a new debate, but it's a debate that's commonly discussed. Uh, a heavier quad should technically be able to float longer and launch farther than a lighter quad. And the rationale behind this is that a lighter quad is going to be impacted by aerodynamics a little bit more, and a heavier quad should technically have more inertia when floating through the air. Now I personally haven't experienced this. I actually think it's not the other way around, but I think that there's more going on than we can than we realize. So what I'm going to propose here is that first and foremost let's look at the equation for momentum. It's going to be P equals mass times velocity and that doesn't take into account uh, aerodynamics or anything else. It only takes into account the mass and the velocity. And if you look at a quad that is 610 grams, that's traveling about 75 miles per hour, which is really kind of the general maximum that a acrobatic quad will travel, versus a 515 gram quad needs to travel about 88 miles per hour to match a 610 gram quad traveling at 75 miles per hour. Now 88 miles per hour just happens to be the nice number that came out of this equation and it's a very it's a number that's very near and dear to my heart, very much like Back to the Future a lot. But um, it's interesting because that number is actually well within reason and I do think that lighter quad that's around 515 grams can achieve 88 miles per hour without much difficulty. So I'm going to propose here that the lighter quad and the heavier quad, regardless of, of top speed or aerodynamics, will have generally the same float time. And what actually gives you more float time is having more power in a lighter package. So I'll discuss that after the test, but I'm gonna do this experiment here. So it's gonna be this quad, this quad here, which is my lighter quad. And I'll weigh it for you right now with the GoPro and everything on it. This is not a light build, 356 grams. With the lighter battery, which is an 850 or 800 milliamp 4S pack, it weighs 460 grams. With the heavier 1300 pack, it weighs 528 grams. So that's, a, that's, that's pretty much the difference between a light acro quad and a heavy acro quad, or a heavier acro quad. And also note that I'm doing this test with an 850 milliamp battery, which cannot provide the, the amps to supply the craft with enough amps to actually reach its top speed. So if we see that the, the general uh, float time is similar, or at least within like a quarter of a second, they're pretty much the same. And note that the lighter quad with the smaller battery is not getting, its, getting to its maximum speed potential. So interesting test, let's see what happens. So I have given this theory that a heavier quad will float farther all of the benefit of the doubt. I have basically only decreased my battery weight in order to see if it will float farther with less weight or more weight. So let's look at the weight differential one more time. The heavier battery is 172 grams, the lighter battery is 104 grams. That is a 70 gram difference and the smaller battery cannot supply this, the same amps as the bigger one. In fact, in the video you hear that the blades are not even spinning up to full speed. And I showed you that in the video as well. And so the difference in float was minuscule. It was not even detectable. You couldn't even tell which one was floating farther. And so I'm pretty much, even though this is not a scientific test, there's nothing scientific about any of this, pretty much putting it to rest that 
the heavier quad will float farther. It's, this is not the case. Yes, maybe it'll cut through air easier because it's heavier, and if it's windy, it'll be able to maintain its weight a little bit easier because it's heavier. But for the most part, weight does not give you better float. What gives you better float is more power in a smaller, lighter package. And even that is more complicated than we think because clearly I reduced the power significantly yet I still got the same float time. Maybe it's because it was lighter. So in a sense, this actually proves the opposite of the theory that the heavier will float farther because the lighter battery, the lighter setup, which was not able to achieve maximum velocity, seemed to get the same float. So the theory that heavier can float farther is absolutely incorrect and it's something that I've been saying for more than a couple months now. People have been arguing with me like through chat, but it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. And here, I mean, there's no more proof than this. I have given all of the benefit of the doubt to the heavier quad that had more power, and I've completely disproven it. So even though it's still an inconclusive video because there's nothing scientific about what I did, the results show you, like right here. I mean, I, did, I charged both batteries to 16.8 volts, and I got the same general float time. That's pretty shocking to me. Anyways, that's all for now. So sorry that... I haven't had time to do any of this, and you can tell right now it's so late that I don't, I still don't have time to do this. But um, hope to make more videos soon, and don't forget to floss. I just got back from the dental convention, actually. <laughs> Please don't forget to floss.